to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest Brandon Webb. And he's here today to share with us his new book, Mastering Fear, A Navy SEAL's Guide. Now, Brandon is a former U.S. Navy SEAL sniper, New York Times bestselling author, experimental aircraft pilot, and entrepreneur. He founded the Hurricane Group, a U.S.-based media and e-commerce company focused on outdoor, military entertainment, news, and clubs. As a New York Times bestselling author, Brandon has been featured in international media as a military and special ops subject matter expert. He has been a contributor on ABC's Good Morning America, NBC's Today Show, Fox News, CNN, the BBC, Cyrus XM Media, MSNBC, and the New York Times. So let's welcome to the show, Brandon Webb. Thanks, Marianne. Always good to be on. Hey, it's always such a pleasure to spend time with you. Very excited about this new book. My goodness, it is a game changer. Thanks. You know, it, it's a special book to me because, you know, as, as you know, it was inspired by teaching one of my closest friends how to swim and overcome his fear of the water. And, you know, we and uh, that was Kamal Ravikant, who's an amazing guy, um, kind of a, Silicon Valley celebrity, and I couldn't believe that when we became really good friends that he didn't know how to swim, and and I said, just give me a week, and I'll teach you, and he's like, I've had Olympic swimmers try and teach me, he's like, it's, you know, I have this fear of the water, and I said, just give me a week, so we met in New York uh, at my athletic club, uh, one hour every morning, Monday through Friday, and Monday, this was a guy that would, like, get into the pool on the ladder, like, gripping this this ladder as he's entering the water, pushing off and, like, grabbing the side of the pool. With, with, I could see the fear in his eyes. And I was like, okay, this, I've got my work cut out for me. But I knew I knew I had to take small steps with him. And, and then by Friday, he jumped in to the pool, cannonballed into the pool and sunk himself to the bottom 10 feet down, held his breath for half a minute and then pushed back up. And, and after, after that Friday lesson, we were taking the subway back to Flatiron where we both live. And he said, you changed my life. Like you've got to write a book about this. And so that, that was the inspiration behind mastering fear was, you know, to show real world, uh, examples of my own life, but other other friends that I have, and show people that everybody deals with fear. We even a Navy SEAL, right? Like I, I live with fear daily, like everybody else. And the point is, it's like how we how we deal with fear on a daily basis is what really determines whether or not we have the life that we we want to have. Well, I'm so glad that you shared that story, and I, I love hearing it because it's you did something different with him than any of his other coaches had done, and you addressed the fear in a different way. And others were trying to teach him swimming techniques, and you were talking about everything in between, you know, like the the mind game that he was playing in regards to the water. Yeah, it's it's you know uh, it's the difference between. Uh, really understanding what's in someone's head or not. And I, one of the the best things I've taken away from my time and career as a Navy SEAL was my last part of my career I spent as a, a sniper instructor and course manager working with some of the best uh, coaches in the world uh, when we were uh, redeveloping our own program. And I just really latched on to positive psychology and the, and the mental game because I seen how effective it was training snipers and also you know, hearing from my friend Lanny Basham, who's a, a gold medalist and one of the real pioneers of, of positive psychology before it was a thing because you know, back in the 70s, it, it wasn't. It was they were, a lot of the psychologists would just focus on on how to make how to make you okay with being second best. That that was Lanny's experience when he won the silver 
metal. He's like, what he realized that he had lost his mental game and came back and went to all these sports psychologists and they're like, Oh, we're just going to make you okay with being second place. He's like, that's not what I want. He's like, I want to win the gold. So he went and spent a year surveying all these Olympic gold medalists and found that there was these fundamental traits they all shared. And then he put it into a program for himself and won the gold medal in Montreal, I think in 76. Uh, and then was a huge, had a huge impact on me when we used him as a consultant uh, for the sniper training in the, in the SEAL community. And then I, I've taken that with me in business as a parent. And, and when I realized that Kamal had this fear of water, I knew I can't just throw him into the pool and expect him to swim or, or start, you know, just hammering away on stroke technique. I had to take small steps to kind of build his confidence and slowly, as you know, slowly confront in small steps the theory out of the water, and as I over time build confidence, and you can see like one week is not a very long time, but you know I took I think I took the right approach, and that was what Kamal told me. It's like you, nobody has ever done that with me before, uh, and you know, and, and he's you know he's not going to win any swim races, but he can survive in the water now, and that to me that's the best gift I could ever give anybody. And I remember a month ago, he called me, he was on a, some type of retreat in Bali. And he's like, I'm sitting in this, in the jungle with a, in a villa doing cannonballs in the pool every morning. Just so grateful <laughs> for, <laughs> for your friendship and for you teaching me how to swim. Cause you know, this is a guy that would be nervous getting invited to like a, a part, like a house party in the Hamptons where there's swimming involved. And now he's, He's fine with it. Yeah, what's interesting is you've taken something that probably comes naturally to you. I mean, when you talk about that, even you get afraid. I mean, most people know you as a pretty badass kind of guy, you know. You're, you know. <laughs> I mean, I had badass parents. I had, bad, I had a badass mom who uh-huh. always letting me kind of explore and, and do some really cool things. Like I... I talk about the story in the book. My mom is the one that pushed me to take this job as a 12 year old kid on a scuba diving boat. You know, this uh, boat uh, out of Ventura Harbor in California would take sport divers out to the islands on, you know, two, three day trips. And she said, Hey, they need a kid for the summer to help out and just work for tips and they'll teach you how to dive. And so I did it. And by 13, I remember I was certified, had a handful of dives under my belt, but one of my scariest childhood memories was getting woken up at two in the morning uh, by Captain Mike. We all, all the the crew slept in the the top of the the boat called the wheelhouse with our bunks, and Captain Mike woke me up out of a dead sleep, and he says, "Hey, the the anchor's stuck, and we have to move to calmer water so the passengers can sleep." get your wetsuit on, you're going to go down and, and dive on the anchor. And I had done that in the daytime, mm-hmm. but we were at this island that was a sea lion, uh, seal habitat. And if you ever watch Shark Week on Discovery Channel, you know what <laughs> eats sea, sea lions, great white sharks. I was, yeah. and this, this Captain Mike was crazy. He, he actually went on a great white shark hunt a couple months earlier at this same spot, like chummed for great white sharks. And was going to go spear one. He's just a crazy, crazy bastard. And I was scared to death. I'm like, I'm not going down there. It's dark. There's sharks. <laughs> um, but I did it. You know, I, I remember just going, okay, I can't let these guys down. Um, I, I remember swimming, jumping off the bow of the boat with my dive light, swimming with my dive light in one hand and the anchor chain in the other as fast as I could 50 feet down to the bottom and I'm watching these sea lines zip by me because you can see the bioluminescence and I was just like oh god this is crazy <laughs> but I but I did it and then you know 15 minutes later I got out of the water and it was like okay it wasn't as bad as I made up in my head and, and I think that's a good example for people also is we have a habit of generally making up the story about fear and 
whether it's public speaking, flying, um, and we make it much worse than it is. And, and that's a, a lesson learned too. And again, back to my, my parents and my mom, I'm just really grateful that I had, uh, you know, parents that were adventurous and would let me and encouraged me to do things like, like take a job like that as a, as a 12 year old kid. That's pretty adventurous. And, um, <laughs> you know, Hey, way to go mom, because you know, it's, it's good for, for people to go out and explore, but my goodness, the life lessons you learned from that and what you're teaching people and how to overcome their fear with mastering fear is, is just astonishing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's just uh, something that this book is, is special to me because I think it, it's really going to help a lot of people. And I learned a ton writing the book myself because I said, okay, I had to really, you know, I used to be a, a master training specialist in the military and, and develop curriculum. And I essentially had to do that with mastering fear. I had to look at, okay, what are the steps and the system that I can put in place so people can, can use that system to, to deal with their fear, whether it's a small fear or, or a big fear. Um, and yeah, already I'm, I've gotten a ton of people messaging me on Instagram, thanking me because it, there's a story I tell in the book that I, and I love the story. It, it's about jungle, jungle training in the military. And we, we used to do jungle training in the Philippines. I was a, a SEAL, uh, at SEAL Team 3, we were trained in desert warfare, but I had a, I had a friend tell me the story about his time in jungle training, and he, they teach you to, to capture monkeys for survival. You, you eat the monkeys. Sorry for the any vegans that are listening. Um, but in a survival situation, everything becomes food. Yeah. Um, and they dig a hole in the ground. They put sticks over the hole so and they put a coconut in the hole and, and uh, the monkeys see the coconut, they reach their hand in, they grab the coconut and they try to take the hand out, but the sticks won't let the, the monkey's fist and the coconut come out of the hole. All they have to do is let go of the coconut and, and they can go walk away, but the monkeys just won't let go. They're holding onto this coke, gripping onto this coconut and, you know, the survival instructors come along and bonk them in the head and, and then there's food for, for the night the the correlation is we all have our own version of the coconut and we have to let go the coconut because a lot of times when you look at it as a coconut as fear, whether it's a bad relationship, a career that you're stuck in, a fear that's really holding you back in your life, um, you have to figure out what that is and, and let it go. And we all have the power to do that. We just have to make the decision which I talk about in the book as well, to, to really decide to do something about it. Yeah, it's so important because people do hold on. I mean, I've done it. I mean, there are things I've, um, I've been afraid of, but it's been interesting. You know, your book really went, I've been, um, I really can see where your book helps a lot of people because there are parts of it that I was reading, and I'm, it's a book that you can reread and you grasp more information as you go. But it's helped me in my life, you know. And so I'm, I'm looking at this just, you know, daily fear. And you talk about the, just the inner dialogue of fear. You know, is it really possible con- to control that? I mean, because you're, it's almost like um, when we ask this kind of question, and you've got the information in your book and how to do that. But when we ask you this kind of question, I mean, again, you're this, you know, Navy SEAL badass guy, and it's. We're just like these uh, mere mortals that are trying to pick it up, you know? Yeah, you know, it's, it's why I really wanted to share a lot of my personal stories and, and be vulnerable because I talk about the book getting out of the Navy. I was larger than life. Like I had a great – being a Navy SEAL in the military is you're kind of on – you know, you've kind of made it in a lot of senses. But when you get out in the – you get out in the regular world and you're like, okay, uh, aside from maybe a handshake and, and some guy buying you a beer at a bar, that's about all it's worth. And so, you know, I got into my first business and learned a ton, but three and a half years later, lost everything. 
and and then went through a a divorce, which you know it was as good as divorces get. I'm like I have a great relationship with with my kid's mom, but it was still tough. Like I went from being this Navy SEAL and running the top sniper course in the world to losing my entire life savings and owing people money. Um, you know, all of a sudden sitting in a house by myself, having to like have conversations with the neighbors on where's your, where's your family. <laughs> it was a really tough period. And, and then I had a fear of, of starting over. Like, what do I, I, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. My parents were entrepreneurs and I said, you know, okay, I can be scared or I can really turn this into a positive and look at, you know, what, what are the lessons learned? in in this and how do I use that to start to learn from and start my next business um, which is what I did but you know there was I'm not going to lie and, and tell people I was just fearless you know because I had I had my own issues you know the the little voice that creeps into our head which I talk about in, in Mastering Fear also like how do we push that voice out and replace it with a, a positive voice and, and that's something uh, we uh, they they call self talk and um, and I learned that from Lanny Basham, the gold medalist. But the you know the positive self talk versus negative self talk were were really our own worst enemies sometimes when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and and also one of the things that I learned was when we were teaching sniper students, um, we Lanny said, look, you don't have to point out all the mistakes because when it, when somebody is begin a beginner. They don't know what they're doing wrong, and you pointing out all the mistakes, you're programming them for failure. It's like just tell them what to do correctly, and so you translate that into your own head. And a lot of times, we have to take take that same approach and and start talking to ourselves differently. So when I hear people say, "I'm not good at math," "I'm an average golfer," "I'm not good at public speaking," they're they're making this self decoration and putting this this self limiting factor on themselves and you know I talk about mastering fear my friend James Altucher who knew he had a he had an issue public speaking and he said you know what I'm going to go take stand up comedy lessons and this guy I mean I've I've spoken to a lot hundreds of people before and I get the fear of public speaking and how terrifying it could be but I, I can't like imagine this guy James going in a comedy club in New York City and and ha- having the guts oh, wow. to get up there and just take take the audience because <laughs> that is not a that's a hostile environment yeah they're pretty any. brutal <laughs> yeah it, but here's the guy that you know identified this fear he had and, and made a conscious decision to overcome it. I share a story like Betsy Morgan, who who's a good friend of mine. She was, the, I think, took over the CEO role from Ariana Huffington. She was the first kind of professional CEO at Huffington Post. She was had an amazing career at CBS and as a rising star, and she left CBS to go take this job at Huffington Post. Les Moonves, the guy in charge of all of CBS, pulled her into his office and he's like, I can't believe you're doing this. Who the hell is going to read the news on the internet? (laughs) (laughs) And now look at where we're at. Right. So it's just, you know, I try and try and feature a lot of real, real successful people in a variety of, of careers and show people, look, we're, we all deal with fear. It's it's this human. It's part of our human makeup. And, people that you would see, wow, like, like astronaut Scott Kelly, I talk about in the book was afraid as a Navy test pilot was afraid that he wasn't good enough to apply for NASA. Um, So it just shows, it shows everyone that, Hey, look, we're all, we're all in this life together. Um, But the system I made, I I really hope will, will help a lot of people. It's a very good system. And again, like I said, it's helped me. You know, in in your book, you talk about how important it is that we ask for what it is that we want. And I'd love for you to kind of expand on that a little bit because I think a lot of times people get into this place where they just don't they don't even think about doing that. Yeah, that's an important point that you bring up, and 
it was when I was writing the book, I, I didn't know whether to put that in the front or the back of the book. Um, and it ended up kind of being in the, in the back because I think it was, it's an important, it's so important. And, and many books have been written about this subject, right? And it's like, what is the why? Like, what are you doing this for? Um, it's, it's a simple but important question because, and I don't think a lot of people spend enough time thinking about it. I, I remember I had a young, young man in New York message me the other day about, he said, I, I, I've applied for the Navy. I want to be a SEAL. And then I just got this, this job offer, a promotion. He's like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I can't possibly throw myself into your situation and, and try and trace back your 24 years of life and, and experience and, and make that decision for you. Like you have to figure out like the why and, and what you want to do in your life. And if, and, and only you can answer that question and it, you have to dig deep. It's not easy all the time, but you have to figure out what you want to do in, in life and what you want to get out of it and then make the decision for yourself. Nobody can make it for you it, because I mean, I see so many times that people that let their parents determine what career they end up in. I, I, I knew a doctor in New York City. I mean, imagine the, the years and hard work it takes to become a doctor in America and then realize two years on the job that you hate what you do. Like, that's, mm-hmm. I mean, what a, what a terrible waste of time. And so it, it's, it's something that it's an important subject and I don't think a lot of people spend enough time thinking about, especially when it, when it comes to, to career, a lot of these things that are, that sometimes fears is being an anchor and holding us back. Um, so that's, that, that's why I really talk about it because I, it's like, I see so many young people that are drifting and they don't have, they just didn't spend enough time thinking about what they want in the long term. And, and it will change too. Like I've changed careers twice. I was, I knew I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. After that wasn't fun anymore. I, you know, decided to be an entrepreneur. Um, so, it's, you know, life changes, but I, I think thinking about what you want in the future, whether it's a relationship career is super important. And then you can kind of identify the fears that are, are getting in the way. Um, but I hope that, I hope that answers your question. Oh, it definitely does. You know, and it's interesting. And I'm so glad that we're taking the time to talk about this. And I think a lot of people, when they um, look at the book, they go, God, Navy SEALs guy, that's great. You know, and so it helps them to also understand that they, these are tangible um, processes that they can put into their life today that anyone can use. Children, adults, you know, um, coworkers. I mean, if I'm uh, managing a large team of salespeople, I would have all of them read this book. I think it's relatable to everybody. Thanks. I really, I, I'm pushing the publisher to, for us to do a young adult version of this because, you know, as a, as a, as a father to three amazing kids and, you know, I've seen the results of, I put this practice into place with my own parenting and to have my 14 year old daughter, Olivia make a video for father's day. And I mean, I've watched this thing 20 times and cry every time, (laughs) but she's just like, thank you for teaching us you know, to confront our fears and, and take risks. And, and she's an amazing, amazing young lady. I mean, I taught her how to roll my plane upside down with do an aileron roll when she was 12. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more, but I think the kids especially will benefit from this because, uh, you know, you and I both, we've, we've been around long enough to know that there's so many people project their own insecurity and fear on, on others. And even I've, I've been around 
teachers and coaches, and they don't even realize they're doing it, but they're they're projecting it onto these young kids. And I just, you know, I talk to, I have a conversation with my own kids about, look, you really have to, you know, decide, you know, we work on goals every year. I said, you got to figure out what you want to do and realize that, you know, some people are going to say certain things and you've got to just believe in yourself and, and don't pay attention to the, to the kind of negative, the negative inputs. Uh, it's going to come. It's just natural. It's like you, it's part of life, but you really can't let it, you know, determine your fate. Like you have only you inside have the the ability to to, to make these decisions for yourself. And so I just I really want to want to release a young adult version of, of mastering fear because I, I I I think it's just going to help a lot of a lot of young kids, especially in today's world where they're so connected on social media and. and and there's a lot of good things that come out of that, but there's also a lot of, you know, a lot of bullying and negativity on the on the internet and social media. Yeah. That I, I think a book like this would really, you know, prepare kids to kind of deal with with life. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine, uh, you know, generations of children having these life skills? I mean, I think they should do it without a doubt. I mean, it's a it's an amazing thing to learn because, I mean, we're teaching you and our discussion here, you're teaching adults how to master their fear with your book and it's in simple steps to go ahead and do that. Well, and so, Brandon, if people are looking to connect with you and learning more about the book where they can purchase it and, you know, be part of your community, where could they go? They can go to my, my personal website is brandontylerweb.com. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Brandon T and Tyler Webb. And I'm pretty active on Instagram. I, I, I enjoy Instagram. I have a lot of fun with it. And I don't think I have one on return direct message. Um, so I like engaging with people that have read the book. Um, but that's, that's where they can find me. I'm, I'm happy to, um, like I said, have, if people want to reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I love hearing the stories and kind of trading uh, trading stories on there as well. Oh, that's a fabulous place to connect. I know I like following your Instagram. Um, I'm also connected with you on social media, and I highly suggest that our listeners do the same. You know, Brandon, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Of course, anytime, Marianne. It's always a pleasure. Well, thank you again, Brandon. I so appreciate not only all the service you've done for our country, but of course, being able to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Mastering Fear, A Navy SEAL's Guide. Again, you can pick up Brandon's book at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all major retailers, and of course, indie bookstores. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.